I was always a lone wolf. I was always a, my own man, and I did everything. I was the secretary, the booking agent at one point. You know, I have a booking agent now. I do all that stuff, but I was always, even to this day, I still do a lot of stuff myself. I'm starting to understand that a team is necessary. Yeah. If you want to go somewhere, you want to go fast, you run by yourself. Mm. But if you want to go far, you go with a team. Mm. So I'm learning to put people together and learning to trust and delegate, which is really hard. And I know you that's hard for you because oh, yeah. you have a company. I also learned that you are the average of the five people you're around. So for me, I'm trying to get into discussions, into circles with people who know more than me. Okay. Because if not, I only know what I know. I need people that are smarter than me to tell me, hey man, this, this, and this. So if you look at Jay-Z, right? There are two, and I know Jay-Z well, like, you know, I know him well. There are two pivotal points where Jay-Z went from the guy with the do-rag to who you see today. Mm. One, Matthew Knowles, Beyonce's father. Mm -hmm. seen a noticeable change when that happened. That was the beginning of the, when everybody went from the jerseys to the button-ups, button right? Mm. Even though they were large button-ups, oversized button-ups, still button-up. The next time, the next thing that I saw everything change is when Jay-Z did that interview with Warren Buffett on Forbes. Go look at the suit he was wearing. Yeah. Go look at the suit he was wearing and the suits he wear now. When he got in that room with Warren Buffett, everything went in a different direction because the people he was, it was a interview with Warren Buffett himself and somebody else. When that happened, it went, it, because somebody came to him and said, hey, you can do this, this, this. Are you deploying your money this way? You know, you need to do this. And that's when it went, shoo. You know they say there's levels to this game. There's levels to this game, man. And Pete I think that's, said it. that that's that's where people realize, you know, you can make a lot of money as an artist, mm -hmm. but you can make a lot of money, even way more money as an investor. And and, and uh, yeah, as an investor, and that's another thing. As a child, I read. I read. It's not a child, but in my early late teens, early twenties, I read Robert Kiyosaki. Mm -hmm. And I, I started to, this is all stuff that I'm learning, you know, I'm applying now, yeah. but I understood the quadrants. Yeah. Like when you're self-employed, you know, like I am, I gotta go to Nice, France to do that show. Yeah. So last week I was in Nice, France. I had to fly to Nice, France to do it. The week before I was in London, I gotta fly to London to do that. Mm -hmm. The week before I was, uh, three weeks before I was in Bali, I gotta fly there. When you're an investor, you don't have to do that. You, your money is, is, is putting you in a situation where, based on the investment you make, it's working for you and you're sitting. Yeah. So that's my goal. My goal is to sit in a seat like this and the numbers come in, coming in. That's when you're really winning. Hmm. But for somebody now who's listening to this and they're growing up in a not so good circumstance, you don't have a lot of money, you don't have a lot of resources, you're saying that you're gonna be the average of the five people that are around you. So if you're growing up in an environment that is not good, how do you get that environment, especially if you're growing up in a bad neighborhood with not so good people around you, bad influences, how do you break out of that? What do okay. you need? First of all, it starts with yourself, okay? Mm. This, it starts with the, the decisions you make. Okay. Again, I grew up in crack era Harlem. Heroin era Harlem. I, 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 I grew up in the worst. For perspective, I grew up in the era in the same neighborhood. If anybody knows the movie Paid in Full, I grew up in that neighborhood. The guys they talking about, I knew those guys. Wow. I was a younger younger kid, but I knew them. Like all the guys, like Alpo and all that stuff. That's that is that is the story of my actual neighborhood, right? So it was bad. But I, I was always the kid who said, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. Mm. And I went and did it. And everybody that I was around was on that mission. Wow. So what happened? The five people I was, was around, we all did music, but it was the same concept. One of them became a grandmaster and world champion DJ. His name was Rock Raider. He, he passed mm. away. God bless him. 
The other one, my one of my my best friends, Sean C. He became an A and R Loud Records. He 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 was the A and R behind Big Pun, Mob Deep, Wu Tang, um, Dead Prez. Um, he did part of Raekwon. He did a bunch of different things. I became who I was. My other DJ was a world champion DJ. There's a and then there's the people who are around the, around me that my mother cultivated. They became famous too. My brother, my brother, I put him through school. He came out. He was a hype man for me for four or five years, going on the road with me. One day he said, I'm going to be my own man. He got up. He went and did the work and did an internship. He wound up at Def Jam Records wow. with another guy named Steve Carlos. They had an amazing promotion team. One day, uh, uh, Young Jeezy goes to Steve Carlos and says, can you run my label, CTE, which was... Uh, Corporate Thugs, which was Young Jeezy, and another guy named Rick Ross came to my brother and said, can you be the president of my label, Maybach Music? And my brother was the president of Maybach Music. He worked himself wow. there. Then he then he left there. He wound up. He got a couple of artists. Now he's got an artist named Lola Brooke. So that's he, he's killing up with that. He's got an, another new artist with uh, named Skylar. She did a record with Chris Brown. That record is number six in the country right now. And he has a deal at Arista Records where he's the senior VP. Five people you around. For us, it was music. So the one thing that I can I ask people to do is, no matter where you live, go get go get go get with the people who want to do what you want to do. Go get with the people who wanna who wanna be where you wanna be. If you out there and you struggling and you wanna learn investing, go find out where in New York, or in your area people are investing. There are a bunch of places where people have investment groups where they teach kids stuff. Go there. Hmm. You can't put it on. Listen, we all go through bad things. Now some of them are worse than others, but you can't put it on that. That's that's what uh, people call the quote unquote victim Olympics. Nah, bro, you got to get out here and do the work if you want to win. Nothing's gonna be handed to you. You have to go get it. Wow. If you enjoyed this clip and you want to watch the entire conversation, all you got to do is click that button right over there. And for those of you who want to stay up to date on the top finance and business news, you can join Market Briefs, my free financial newsletter, by clicking that button below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.